Do you ever wonder why you have a recurring pattern of being in relationships with narcissists in your life? Maybe you had a family member growing up who was a narcissist, a friend in your adult life who's been close to you, and maybe even a string of romantic partners. Well, to, in today's video, we are going to talk about why the empath is actually the narcissist in the relationship to themselves and what that means. We'll start by covering what a narcissist is at a high level, what an empath is, and then we'll talk about this really important ingredient of understanding shadow work and how this applies to breaking this pattern of constantly being on the side of the narcissist in your life that may cause you to feel damaged or challenged or constantly put down by the relationships around you. So first and foremost, if you're not already familiar with the term empath, an empath is essentially a person who's highly attuned to the feelings and emotions of people around them. But one of the key features here is that the empath tends to actually really struggle with permeable emotional boundaries. They may struggle to really understand where they end emotionally and somebody else begins. And when we look at the, what a narcissist actually is, is in a summary at a very high level, it's somebody with personality qualities that include a lot of grandiosity, a lot of thinking extremely highly of oneself, needing excessive and constant admiration, often thinking other people are quite inferior and struggling to empathize with other people. Now, what I often see as a huge pattern is that empath empathetic or empath individuals tend to really be surrounded by narcissists across time as a pattern in their lives. And I've had so many people ask me over the years, like, why is this happening? Why do I constantly end up in these types of relationships? Especially because the empath, after being hurt by relationships with narcissists time and time again, may actually be wary of this. They may be aware that, okay, I have a tendency to get into relationships with this type of person. Let me, you know, be really conscientious at the beginning of starting a new friendship or starting a romantic relationship so I don't repeat these same patterns. Well, here's something that is actually driving this more than anything else. And it's that we have a subconscious comfort zone that is the number one feature that causes us to feel attraction to people at a subconscious level. And this doesn't have to just be romantic attraction. This can be literally attraction where you feel like you want to be around somebody, spend time around them, get to know them. And what does this have to do with why the empath is the narcissist in relationship to self? Well, if you grew up in an environment where maybe you had a parent or somebody very close to you, a coach, a mentor, somebody in your life where they were a narcissist or had really strong narcissistic qualities, essentially what happens is you learn to build a relationship in that person's presence where you treat yourself the way that person treats you. If for example, one of your parents was a narcissist, you may learn that it's not safe to have boundaries. So you violate your own boundaries. You may learn that you constantly have to walk on eggshells, put other people first and put yourself last. Maybe you find that you have to deprioritize your needs, your feelings, and you know your ability to actually communicate to other people what's coming up for you because the narcissist isn't available to have those types of conversations. And so what happens is spending time in this type of person's presence, especially if it's repeated, will program a lot of these subconscious patterns in the relationship to yourself, where you literally learn that my needs can't matter, my boundaries can't matter, I have to walk on eggshells, be highly attuned to other people around me, be able to read between the lines about what everybody else is feeling, and the casualty in that becomes the relationship to yourself. Now, as we grow older and maybe leave that environment, one of the most interesting things is that your conscious mind may be able to reflect and look back and say, that wasn't a healthy environment to grow up in. I learned unhealthy patterns. That person wasn't healthy in my life. But you have to remember your conscious mind is responsible for roughly three to 5% of your thoughts, your beliefs, your emotions, your actions, your, your choices, really. Whereas your subconscious and unconscious collectively are responsible for 95 to 97% of all of these beliefs and thoughts and emotions and decisions. And the other thing you need to know is that your conscious mind picks up about 40 to 60 bits per second of data from its environment. Your subconscious and unconscious can pick up up to a billion bits per second of data. So essentially you're taking in so much information when you first meet people and in the entire environment that you're in, but only a very, very small portion of that is making its way to your conscious mind where it can be used for rationale, logic, reasoning, constructive or critical thinking. 
And so essentially, because your subconscious mind, the one running the show is making all of the decisions for you at the end of the day, or at least 95 to 97% of them, what's happening is your subconscious is wired for familiarity. It thinks that familiarity equals safety and thus survival. And you have to remember your subconscious mind is very survival oriented, meaning to make a very long story short, if you grow up in an environment where you are forced to be extremely empathetic. You're forced to be, you know, the empath in the relationships around you, hyper attuned to other people's feelings, walking on eggshells, deprioritizing your feelings in favor of others. You are treating the relationship to yourself the way the narcissist treated you. You are the narcissist in the relationship to yourself. And so this subconscious comfort zone that you developed in childhood where, you know, it was familiar for you to do all these different things. This is where as an adult, even if you're trying to be really conscientious when you're first meeting people and you're trying to vet for relationships properly, make sure that somebody's not going to be the narcissist. What's happening is in a very short period of time upon meeting somebody, your conscious mind may be able to logic its way through and reason to, to try to, you know, judge effectively or essentially discern effectively if somebody's going to have these, these painful patterns um, in your life as you're starting to invest in the relationship with them or get to know them. But your alarm bells will not go off if something feels familiar. You can consciously be like, oh, that behavior isn't very healthy. But your subconscious mind will be like, but it's familiar. And so we want it. We This is going to create safety and survival. We've had these patterns before we've survived. So these patterns are working for us. And so what will often happen to people is that they come out of this subconscious comfort zone of being around somebody who treated them in a narcissistic way, because that conditions their subconscious mind, then they'll go into relationships. Their conscious mind may meet people and be like, oh, I don't want to be around this person. I see some red flags. And yet their subconscious will sort of tune out those red flags across time and keep investing in people like that until we learn to recondition the pattern so that we are no longer the narcissist towards ourselves. And what I mean by this is that you have to look at all of, and you can actually do this as an exercise. You can write out all of the different things that the narcissist does to you in relationships that you're not happy with, violate your boundaries, put you last, deprioritize your feelings, shame you for having feelings, perhaps, um, you know, minimize your needs, gaslight you in your experience of the truth. And as you write those things out, you can put a column next to that and you can write out how much do I do these things in the relationship to myself. And unfortunately, and, and to be clear, this is me, not me saying that this is your fault or anything of that nature. You know, nobody asked for this type of programming to begin with. But what happens, and this is the really tragic part about when we don't address the subconscious mind, is that if you grow up and you were the victim of something in your childhood, in your experience, if that something, if that exact set of experiences conditioned you enough because it was prevalent enough and repeated enough in your life, then the real tragedy becomes that you went through the injustice once. And then as an adult, you were likely to keep repeating these types of injustice over and over and over again, until you learn that this is what's familiar to your subconscious mind and actually change those patterns at that level. So this means if we look at those things that we put in those columns there about how if you violate your own boundaries, don't meet your own needs, put yourself last, minimize your feelings, gaslight your experience, all these different things we talked about. If you see those and, and you can rate them from one to 10 in that second column about how strongly these patterns show up in terms of how you treat yourself until you shift and change those patterns in the relationship to yourself repeatedly enough that it actually reconditions, rewires your subconscious mind, then unfortunately there is a likelihood of getting back into those same types of relationship dynamics. Now I do have a course about this that you can check out for free. It's called Overcoming Narcissistic Abuse. It's all about how to recondition your subconscious mind after going through any kind of relationship dynamic with a narcissist, how to really take your boundaries back, how to re-regulate your nervous system so you're not so hypervigilant, how to learn those emotional boundaries, how to recondition or reprogram different core wounds you might have acquired, things like not being good enough or 
or not worthy because perhaps you had a, a narcissist who sort of gave you that messaging repeatedly in your life. It's going to help you dive into those things, really recondition them, learn to meet your own needs. But I just want to say like all of those things that we talked about are really important, but learning to take yourself into consideration as much as you're considering others. The goal is not to consider other people more or yourself more. The goal is to get as close to equal as possible. And as you do that, that will empower you to not just be so consumed by other people's experiences, not just be so consumed by other people's feelings, but to actually learn to listen to your own feelings, your own inner guidance at the same time so that you can make choices where you're mindful of how these things affect you as well. So I just wanted to stop by here and let you know a really exciting announcement and is that we are doing $1,000 off of our lifetime memberships to the Personal Development School for Life. So I will tell you what's actually included in there. Number one, you get access to all of our different 60 plus courses everything about every single attachment style, how to reprogram, how to heal. We have courses in there about the six stages of relationships and how to navigate each stage. We have courses in there about how to get back together or heal relationships between different attachment styles and all of the steps for reconnecting. And we have all sorts of other courses on boundaries, conflict communication, setting and achieving goals at the subconscious level, seeing how attachment styles even show up in your workplace and how to navigate some of those different dynamics and heal those aspects of your attachment style. There's so many courses in there, but number two feature that we have, daily social support groups. So these are small groups that are all included in the lifetime membership. And we do daily events, sometimes even twice a day, where there will be you know, 10 people or so led by a trained counselor, coach, or facilitator. And you can actually join in there and practice some of the different tools with other members. It's a great place to build relationships, connect with like-minded people, and to really fast track your learning and have that extra support all the time. And number three, we have daily webinars Monday through Saturday. Um, I do three of those webinars every single week. That's the time to come in, ask me your questions. You can come in on camera and we can chat. You can come in off camera and just post them in, your, in the chat, whatever you're most comfortable doing. And we have other amazing counselors, coaches, facilitators who also lead other webinars. And again, those are slightly larger groups of people, but it's a great opportunity to connect with like-minded learners who also care about the same things, emotional connection, relationships, and personal growth. So I hope you check it out. We also have all these different discussion forums in there. We have a Facebook group, so you can connect with each other there as well. And there's a tremendous amount of community support in an ongoing way at PDS. So I would love to see you on the other side. I hope you join me. And now we'll go back to the video. So really important things to pay attention to. Um, again, a lot of those things we talked about, the emotional boundaries, the needs, the regulating your nervous system, reprogramming core wounds, a lot of those are covered in that course. You can check it out for free for seven days down below, more than enough time to get through that course. Um, and if you have more questions about this topic or you want to see more content about narcissistic abuse overall or recovering or healing, coming out of a relationship with a narcissist, um, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking, sharing, subscribing if you're enjoying this channel. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos.